Thanks for coming for this uh, CSS talk itself. Uh, let me just uh, introduce myself. My name is James, and I'm here to present to you uh, Foundation for Emails. Okay, before we get started, can I just by a show of hands, how many of you here have done any email, HTML emails before? Wow, quite a fair bit. Huh? So usually, you know, before I pre prepare for a talk, I'm very concerned. In fact, I was discussing with Hating. I'm not too sure whether there's anyone here work with HTML email because you see, this is actually a CSS talk. So, so I'm not too sure because usually we will think of you know, using things like CSS flags, CSS grids, all these things. You know? So that's why when I actually prepare for this talk, um, I'm a bit concerned actually. So good, I think it's more than 50% of you actually work with HTML email. I believe it's painful, right? Yes. Ah, okay, good. Uh, I just want to share with you, um, this talk is actually foundation for emails, but a bit about myself first, what I do. Basically, I train. Okay, I teach people. I know usually many of you are actually developers, designers here, but uh, basically I'm, a, I'm an instructor. I teach people how to code. It's, not a, it's actually not an easy job. <laughs> you need to be very patient and all these things as well. <laughs> okay, so some of my clients are things like uh, people like designers, uh, developers, of course, you don't need to train them because they really roughly know. And of course, uh, people that is actually non code savvy itself. Okay, so that's what, that's what I do for a living itself. Okay, so I, I, I live on a mantra is simpl simplifying concepts. Okay, simplifying complex concepts and make it very easy for people to understand. Anyone can understand. Okay, yeah, this whole idea. Okay, so basically my passion is uh, on web design, web development. I also do design stuff like, you know, like uh, design things like Adobe, using Adobe design uh, suite itself. So um, usually many of my uh, clients uh, come to my training center, so they want to learn things like uh, front-end scripting, like HTML, CSS, jQuery, JavaScript, so I, so I do all this training itself. So increasingly for the past few years, a lot of people have been asking me, uh, James, uh, do you do HTML email? Then I was thinking, anyone can do it. I mean, HTML email is not that difficult, right? I mean, I thought it's, it's quite easy. It's like, you know, it's like paragraph, headings, all these things. And lo and behold, I thought it was easy. It's only when I actually delve more into it. This is my expression, are you clear? <laughs> I believe many of you also have this kind of problem. I said, oh, that difficult. Okay, what's the problem of, of uh, using this kind of HTML email? And does anyone know? What's, what's the problem? When you code the time, okay, the, can you use things like divisions? Can you use things like all the latest CSS free techniques? No, uh, you can't do that, right? Okay, the three main problems that I face is, okay, this is called it, HTML email hell. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Firstly, you have to code like the 1990s. Remember those days? Those good old days where you used tables, remember or not? Oh my gosh, nested tables. I was shocked. I thought the web is progressive. But no, you have to nest tables and tables and tables, use things like TDTR, 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 can even web like this or so. Right? That's bad. Okay, so, and the, not only that, we have to also inline our CSS styles. Much to my horror, who does inlining right now? Do you do inlining? I mean, for website, you don't do that, right? Unless you want to be a bit more specific, understand that, okay? But most of the time, we just use things like link styles. Am I right to say that? Okay, so I was shocked about inlining CSS styles. Okay, for those of you who have no idea about inlining CSS styles, I'll show you how, how horrendous it looks like later on. And of course, we have to cater to a multitude of email clients. Because unlike website, website we have to cater for what? As what Hui Jing say, Firefox, right? Um, Google Chrome, okay, no one talk about the bad word called Internet Explorer. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we don't talk about that, okay? <laughs> maybe Microsoft Edge, maybe so. But that's the problem, because we have about 20 over email clients. For Microsoft Outlook 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, you kind of wish that all your clients don't use Microsoft Outlook. You kind of wish that all your clients use Apple iPhone, the smarter choice. <laughs> but no, we, we don't have a choice for that. So let's give you an idea how does an inline style looks like. That's what we do, that's what I teach. 
Oh my gosh, it makes the training so boring. Say, ah, sir, they say, are we going to code like this? Can you imagine we'll teach a, a bunch of designers like this? I think mean, they will scare the hell of them, man. Eh? Okay, so this is, this is what we have to do. Okay, for those of you who have done HTML email, you know you have a lot of those kind of spacing, if you know what I mean. So we have to do the cell padding. We have to do things like uh, margins, uh, padding top, padding right, padding bottom, padding left, zero. Margin top, margin right, margin bottom, margin left, zero. To nullify everything. That's what we do. Okay, so I think those of you, I think, wow, good thing I don't do HTML email. It's not so bad. Okay, so that's what I do. So I sit back and think, is there any other solutions? I'm not too sure any one of you, is there any solutions that you have endorsed or employed? So I found out three of them. Okay, to solve this conundrum of having such a difficult task of creating uh, email designs for the various clients. Okay, the first one, many of my participants like to endorse in this is the email service providers. Things like MailChimp. Yes, I think a lot of people heard of that. Litmus, Campaign Monitor, there are so many, they have really made templates. That's good. So that's drag and drop, and that's it. But the problem is, you can't customize them. And many clients require to customize them. Second choice you can do if you know HTML is you can download email templates from Cerberus. Okay, Litmus, they have. Okay, but you still need to actually delve into the codes and change them. Now, for today, what I'm going to suggest to you is basically to use something called email frameworks. Anyone use that before? Okay, that's the reason why you're here. Okay, now, uh, that was, I think, a few months back. I think there's someone, I'm not, I'm not too sure, I forgot the name really. He talked about using an email framework called MJML. Okay, it, it was, it was, were, you, were you the one? Uh, I used this guy called Ben. Ben, yes. I thought it was pretty good, MJML. Okay, but I'm going to do it about foundation for emails. Okay, it's basically from Zerp, this company. I'll show you the website. Okay, so if you want, you can just take note of this. It's foundation.zerp.com. Okay, slash emails. Okay, basically foundation is a framework just like Bootstrap. Okay, if you have used Bootstrap or heard of Bootstrap, you know how easy and how uh, they want to make things easy for you. Are you clear? So they also use the same concept of a 12 columnar grid. Okay, so it's very similar in that sense. So of course, once you go inside this, they give you a choice to choose whether you want the CSS version or the CSS version. I'm not too sure anyone of you here ever used SCSS before. It's a godsend command. So which means you can use things like partials and things like that. Now, today I will show you using this CSS version Trust me, you will fall in love with that. Okay, apart from all those codes that I've seen earlier on, you have to inline them at the end of the day because you have to make sure that all the email clients can support. We're going to use this SAS version here. Okay, so first things first, I show you what are things to actually get started first. Okay, is you need to install first things like um, Node.js. I'm not too sure anyone used that before. So you can type in things like npm or node package manager. Are you clear so far? Okay, many of the things can be downloaded, but you have to use the terminal or the dot shell to do that. Okay, and download the latest version. For both Windows and Macintosh, you have that. I think you know those of you are these, uh, developers here. And you can also download something called git git for versioning control. So every time you download, you get the latest version, not outdated version. Are you clear? Okay, so you need to go, actually go to these two websites. Now, because of time constraint, okay, I've done it for you already, obviously. And uh, one, once you install these two, um, uh, you know, Git as well as uh, Node Package Manager, in your terminal, you have to type in npm to install foundation first to make sure that it's working. Okay, this all, all, all of them is actually not, uh, found in the website itself. So you have to install the foundation command line interface first. So that at the end of the day, you can type in things like foundation. Are you clear? Okay. Next thing is you have to create a new project itself. Okay. And once you have done that, you can just basically type in the name of your project. Okay. It takes a bit of time to download. They say take about a minute. Don't, don't, don't believe them. It takes about five to 10 minutes to download. Are you clear? They say it's very fast to install, but, but they actually install a lot. The only drawback of using this foundation, the only drawback is they download a 
huge, humongous amount of files. But once that is done, it's very much easier to do, okay, to get yourself out from the HTML email hell. Okay, so let me share this with you. I have already created a folder called Sushi Delight. So this is just a demo on how it works. Okay, first things first. At the back, can you see clearly? Can, right? Okay, good. So basically, I'm now doing inside my DOS shell itself huh? for, for Macintosh is terminal. First thing first, before you get started, is you need to type in this word called foundation. I remember earlier on, I installed NPM. I can type in foundation. Is you have to do something called watch. To watch and instantiate um, that particular project itself. So it just takes some time, give it a few seconds, and straight away this is what you'll see. Are you clear? Now, when you install the NPM, what it does is that it will install something called ZURB stack. They have a stack. Okay, what the ZURB URB stack means is that it does a few things. It does the inlining for you. That's very good. You don't need to type in all by yourself. Secondly, it compresses the images for you. I'm not too sure how many of you use things like uh, tiny ping, tiny JPEG to compress your files. You do that? Or maybe Photoshop, okay? But actually, you don't need to. Everything is all done inside here automatically. And it does browser sync. What does browser sync? That means every time you code, straight away it will update for you. Are you clear? That's very good. Okay, so when I, when I actually do it, I actually almost fell in love with it. Okay, so let me just share, share what Zerbstack can do. So first things first, when you actually launch this, uh, let me just show you the, uh, the, the folder here. I think at the back, uh, uh, for the benefit, uh, can I just zoom this in? <laughs> because it's very small. Well, give, me, give me a sec first. Uh. Is it much better? Okay, now, so you just need to take note of basically two folders at the back. One is called SRC for source, and one is called DIST for distribute. Now, whenever you do a project, you do everything from the source. Distribute is automatically outputted for you. So within the source itself, okay, can you see that I have a few other folders as well? So I want to focus on is the pages. By default, when you install foundation, the NPM itself, okay, you can see these are some of the files created for you. Okay, so by default, they give you index. So um, I just show you, I open up my code. Uh, editor. This is an index.html. Are you clear so far? What you see earlier on, let me just come back here again. This is basically this code here. Clear? Now, just for the benefit to make it easy for you, give me a few seconds here so you can see what's happening. Can you see? So usually when I code, I do side by side. Just to prove to you how easy it is, can you see hi there? Okay, I'll just say James is here. So I just save this, give it a few seconds, this is created, are you clear? So whatever I code is immediately being shown there. Life is easy. Okay, okay so first things first is this. Eh? When you install the foundation, they will give you by default something called Inky language. What a name, Inky, I-N-K-Y. Do you remember earlier on the, the little uh, picture you see that little diagram? Um, okay, that little, cute little, yes, it's called Inky, by the way, just so you see, very easy for you to remember. Okay, so uh, let me share with you how easy it works. Huh? Let me just delete off all these codes because I'm going to do a very simple project. Is it okay? Um, we have time, right? We're going to spend the whole night. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. okay, so first things first, huh? I delete off everything to show I'm not cheating. Okay, so you can see this is a comment, so it does nothing. So if I save this, you see nothing. Fantastic. Are you clear? Okay, so what I do is this. Huh? It goes by the concept of the 12 column grid. I'm not too sure anyone knows about the bootstrap 12 columns. Have you ever used that before? So, okay, the concept is this. Huh? If I want to have two columns equal with, basically it's six and six, because six and six will give me 12 columns. Are you clear? Okay, just, just you know, benefit those people who have not used Bootstrap before. So this is how it works. Huh? I just type in container. Okay, by the way, uh, I will show you what I want to uh, do in a project. This is what I'll do. And by the way, uh, I, I forgot to mention it's responsive as well. 
Okay, so this is the project that I'm going to do within the next 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Hopefully, I have time. So we have four rows. Okay, two columns in the third row. And what it does is that when it goes to the mobile view, all of them will become linearized. Are you clear? Okay, good. So take note, I'm doing the first row now. Huh? So the first row contains images. Can you see that? James Sushi Palace here. Okay, good. So this is, this is what I'm going to do here. And uh, if you're impressed, you must later on clap your hands. Uh. If, if, if. Uh. So what I do is container. It's the entire container. And then, uh, I'm not too sure anyone ever, uh, of you ever used Emmet before. So I'm combining with a bit of Emmet. Okay, if you have not used Emmet, Emmet uh, is basically a shortcut way of writing codes. Basically, I have a row in a container. Are you clear? And I only have one row and I'm going to only have one column. Are you clear so far? Okay, that's it. So I just press the tab key and straight away this is created for me already. <laughs> it's easy, it's easy. Yeah, okay, so, so every time I teach this, I'm, oh my gosh. Okay, so this, that's what you do. Okay, so this is the first row. Okay, so this is the header. Right? Okay, next thing. Because we are going to, okay, let me show you what's actually happening first. This is going to be a second row. The second row is going to be the, the main heading here. Are you clear? Okay, it's also going to be one column as well. So, uh, I'll just come back here again in your code editor. I'll just say row, column. Are you clear so far? So, we have the main heading. So I just basically do all this first. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I'm doing correctly. Ah, I forgot to mention to you, it's actually columns. Uh, wrong spelling, huh? <laughs> okay. It's columns, columns, not column. Clear so far? Okay, now the tricky part is the third row, which consists of two columns here. Can you see? Now, every strategize, I hope at the back you can see. So I have seven sub-columns and five sub-columns. So basically, my left-hand side is larger, obviously, okay? So uh, this, is, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to say row columns times two. Are you clear so far? Okay, times two means I'm going to have two columns. So basically, I have two columns here. Are you clear so far? That's what I do. It's quite straightforward. Uh, this will be an image. And this will be the main article here. So main article. Basically, I just do all these things first. And finally, um, I'm going to have the last row, which is uh, basically row columns, C-O-L-U-M-N-S. Okay, so this will be the footer. Okay, so before I continue on, can you see that I have four rows? Okay, and basically, once I finish that, I'll just basically save the file, give it a few seconds, and um, inside, okay, where is it? Inside my website, it will have this. Are you clear so far? Okay, so what you do not see is inside this um, distribute, which I show you if I just zoom this in, okay, it will immediately create the HTML for you. So inside this uh, index here is the actual. HTML that is being created here. And beautiful. Did I type this in? No, are you close so far? You love that, right? Okay, so this is by right, I have to write like this. Do I need to? You don't need to. Or remember all the dreaded tables? Remember I mentioned to you? I even wish you the best. That's, they can even do it in line for me. Sweatless, are you clear? That's the word for that. Okay, so uh, this time I just come back to index. Okay, I'll just do a very quick one, just to, to not to waste your time. Okay, so first things first, let me just um, zoom this in here. So I will have an image. Okay, and um, for the image is, I store the image under the assets. And the image is a JPEG banner here. Okay, so basically I will just say banner here. Okay, hold on first. Let me save the file and let me just test this out. Okay, you know what? I think I, I spelled wrongly. Let me just check. Uh, I forgot one more thing. I have to store the images, which I've forgotten. 
uh, the images is under my demo files, assets. I only have two pathetic images. I have forgot to store the images. Forgot, so pardon me. I go to my assets. I go to my, um, uh, let me see, demo, sushi delight, sauce. Okay, and I store it inside the assets and under IMG. Okay, so basically all the images need to be stored inside the assets folder. And I just want to show you, immediately it will minify for you. Once you store inside there, to prove to you, I'm not too sure at the back, can you see or not? Uh, can you see these two lines that's called minified here? I just copy and paste straight the, the minify for me. Are you clear so far? Life is easy. No need tiny ping. Are you clear? Just copy, paste, and store inside there. So it's all minified really. Okay, haven't finished yet. Um, I have to show you. Okay, so I have that. And it's fully responsive already. Okay, so I just do very quickly. Um, so I'm always looking at things just to make sure that I'm still on time. Huh? Just to make it faster, um, I will just show you. Any time of the day you put an image, you must always enclose them in a the center. C E N T E R, so that the, everything will be centralized. So basically, I centralize that here. Just so show you center image. So at the back, you can see clearly here. Now, um, what I've done is that I have, uh, I will just do a simple copy and paste just to make your life easy. So that um, heading one, heading two, and I will, okay, because this is inky. There are a few things you have to take note. You have to actually uh, memorize some of the commands that they have. Okay, now by default, I just show you first. If I save this file and to show you, um, okay, sushi for all. Okay, this is vo, this is column, sushi for all. Let me just save this first. Huh? Am I getting this right? Refresh this. Mm, okay. One first, uh, what is actually happening? Do, do, do. Okay, it's okay. Okay, what first? Uh, row columns. Okay, row um, columns. Okay, test here. Save this. Yeah, it's just this one to. Yeah, probably after we start the server again. Okay, give me a minute first, eh? Okay, let me just sit down first, eh? Okay, let's hope it works. Yes, test here is working. Okay, so let's do a very quick one. Um, so I just go to the header, copy this, I go back to the index, and just paste it here. Save the file. This will be updated. Okay, I'll just do it quickly. Then um, what I do is I just end a class. There are some classes you have remember if you are using foundation. It's called text hyphen center. It's pretty easy to understand. So once I just have text center, straight away this becomes centralized. Are you clear? Okay, very quickly, uh, I've image here. And uh, what I want to show you is this image is going to be seven columns and five columns. Can you see that? Okay, good. So um, what I'll do is I'll just say large seven. And over here is large five. At the back, can you see? Okay, what does large mean? Okay, in foundation, large means desktop. Are you clear? Okay, so basically I have seven sub-columns on the left and, right, and uh, the, the right uh, sub-columns is five. Are you clear? Okay, now you can actually have it small, but I don't do that because it's understood. Because by default, if I don't type in small, it means that um, it will look like this. Basically, everything will be the full column. Are you clear? Okay, they have small, so small basically for mobile devices. Okay, as well as, um, okay, what I do is I'll just say, um, Okay, so I, I image itself, assets, IMG, and I have another image, 
I think not wrong, it's called Futo Sushi JPEG here. Okay, I just said Futo Sushi. And um, if I just want to finish this off, I want the image to be centralized. So basically what I do is I want the image to be centralized like this. Always remember, when you insert images, they must be centralized. Are you clear? Okay, so basically I have a center image. And just to make it simple, I have a description here. I copy this description and put it inside my um, large sub-columns. Finally, for footer, life is easy. Just copy and paste. I'll just paste it inside here. Okay, let me just save the file to show you. Um, okay, we're almost there, but I think the image is, is called Sushi Futo. Excuse me, Sushi Futo. Okay, so Sushi hyphen Futo. Let's save this and let me show you. This is what's actually happening. Are you clear so far? Okay, so you can see this is a desktop and this is actually a mobile in a very raw format. Not too bad. Life is easy, but the entire code is all created for you already. Okay, now I know this is still a very raw format here. So what I will do is I will show you a bit on how you implement CSS. Are you clear? But so far, this is not CSS, right? Okay, this is what, what this talk is all about. Okay, for CSS, we have to use something called SCSS. Are you clear? Okay, so this is what I would have to do. First things first, let me show you. Inside the source folder here, if I just magnify this, I have uh, a few other folders. Okay, apart from uh, assets, which shows me the IMG, which remember early on I inserted the two images. Do you remember I minified them already automatically? There, are a there is a folder called SCSS. And inside this SCSS, I have two other files called uh, settings and app here. Okay, basically what app does, it holds all uh, linking, can you see they, they import they import to some of the existing uh, SCSS files. Okay, so foundation have their own. So what I will do is I will import my own. I will create my own and I'll just give it whatever name it is. Maybe I'll just call it um, import custom. Okay, so I will create an SCSS file called custom.css. Are you clear? Uh, custom.scss. So I save this. Once I save this, then I will go to my, um, okay, where is my source here? Okay, which is actually uh, source assets. Okay, so do you remember what's the name is it called? Custom, right? So um, I will then come inside here and create a new file and call this as underscore custom SCSS. Always remember, if you are going to type in that name itself, you have to put a little underscore to give it a name, are you clear? For the SCSS itself. Okay, so um, let me just um, stop, stop here first. Huh? So I have this, which is empty. And um, what I'll do is I want to control the heading one and heading two here, are you clear? Now. For foundation, what they do is they do everything according to the entire name. They will immediately create a class called container. So what I say is dot container inside here. And because it's SSS, I can do nested. I can just say H1 inside of that container. Are you clear? Okay, so we're going to do something simple. Um, what I do is I'll just uh, do a simple font family. Okay, and Arial, and font size. Um, what, what I'm typing all this is basically uh, Emmet. If you're not using Emmet, you will fall in love with Emmet. Can you see that? I'm just typing in all the shorthands here. And basically, I just set the color to something called Cadet Blue. Okay, I will stop here first. Let's save the file. And let's just test this out here. Can you see this? It's actually working already. Okay, so now when I actually do the SCSS, I just want to show you is that what they will do is inside the distribute folder, they will create a CSS for you automatically. Are you clear? 
So it's all this is being created for you. So everything is automatic. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I'll just do a bit more. H2, oops, H2, not height. So H2. And I'll just do a font family again. Okay, T is for Times New Roman. Okay, I'll just do something simple. Font size, 26. Font style, italic. Okay, and color. Okay, I'll just do this too, Nina. I'm not going to bore you with that. Okay, so dark cyan. Okay, you, you get the idea. Okay, so basically I can continue on tapping in uh, basically uh, all the heading 1, heading 2, heading 3 and all these things here. So let me just save the file. Can you see that I'm doing the nested here? So um, once that is done, you can see this is the entire idea. Now, of course, if given more time, I can do all these things and make it nicer. But you can see this entire area is what? It's really responsive already. Now, after give, give me a few more minutes. Once I finish with that, the next thing is you have to inline. Remember I mentioned to you about inlining? Okay, now let me show you what is the result first. Huh? The result is still not yet in line because if I show you the index here, can you see this is still not in line? Oops. Okay, so you can see that it's still linking to uh, app.css on the very top. So it's still linking to an external CSS file. So this will be broken in many email clients. Are you clear? Okay. So what we have to do is we have to inline all of them. Now, how do I inline them? Once you're about to finish off already. Now, to inline them, you have to come back here again. Are you clear? To your terminal here. Let me just uh, terminate this. Okay. You just need to understand this. Uh, I've already written that down already. If you want, uh, I can let you download this uh, PowerPoint slide. To inline that, you have to type in this command called npm node package manager one build. Are we clear? So you just basically have to build the whole entire area. Give it a few seconds. Okay, so npm one build. Give it a few seconds. You will just inline the entire. It's using, by the way, gulp, which is actually a workflow or foundation. Immediately it will inline. Okay, I show you the codes for that. I show the codes. So once that is done, can you see the entire code is in line already? Did I type all this in? The good thing is, the answer is no. Really cool. This is what you can do with this method here. So uh, go and use foundation, really honestly. It's, you know, I've tried all ways and means on trying to actually make email easier. But you know, I, I've used all kinds, you know, downloading different templates and all these things here. But ever since I actually discovered this way, I find it's a joy to create HTML designs. Are you clear? Okay, like what I mentioned to you earlier on, we use something called Inky, things like uh, the 12 subcolumn grids. Okay, go and learn the language, it's very easy. They have buttons, they have uh, call outs, and all those things here. Okay, so um, good. Once, once that is done, of course, at the end of the day, you have to just copy and paste this and put it to your respective uh, email service providers and just do the uh, appropriate email blast. Hope this is useful for you. Okay, so um, I'm not going to bore you with the, the, the details here. Um, I hope this is uh, useful uh, for those of you who wants to actually go back and start doing it. Straight away, go to foundation and download and start using that. But the main thing is you have to install both NPM and Git. Lah. Then straight, straight away you can use it already. Okay, I hope this is useful for you. So if you have any questions, you can email to me or you can go to my LinkedIn from there. I hope this is uh, useful. So thanks for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm not. Good time. Thank you very much. That was a full cost and you're going to pay. Uh, you're going to pay free. Yes. Uh, you're thank you. Yes, yes. So, so yeah, I just cut short. <laughs>